Hey guys, welcome back. And today um, I want to really talk about um, the patients that have had COVID-19 and three to four weeks later they're still having symptoms. We've concentrated a lot on the positive cases and the death rate, which is really important. But we haven't really talked about these people that are still having symptoms three to four weeks out. And that's what I want to talk about today. So when we talk about these long-term um, effects that people are having after they've had the acute uh, COVID-19 and, and they feel like they've recovered um, from the COVID-19 uh, symptoms and they're still having this uh, uh, muscle pain, a uh, shortness of breath if they try to do too much, fatigue, loss of taste, loss of smell, on into the weeks three, four, and five. And that's what I really want to focus on because it's becoming a big problem. Uh, there's been so many people with COVID-19 that now uh, a lot of these people, there's, there's, it's been said that there's over um, a quarter of a million patients in the United States have this long haulers or these long-term effects of COVID-19 many, many weeks after the COVID, their acute attack. There was a study done in Italy that showed that um, patients that were, that were discharged from the hospital, I think there was about 150 patients, um, and they followed up on the patients, and only 18 of those patients did not have, did not continue to have symptoms. Um, they couldn't really do a whole lot. Um, the CDC, also did a uh, telephone calls to about 290 patients to see how patients were doing after they had um, had the COVID-19. And really what they were trying to figure out was were these patients still having effects after having the COVID-19. Their results, the CDC results showed that about a third of the patients could not return back to their usual activities they were having these effects of these long, this long-term effect of COVID-19, uh, known as long haulers. So when we look at the effects of COVID-19, um, we, we look at the, uh, if we look at the heart, uh, COVID-19 seems to affect the heart and, uh, and you get inflammation, myocarditis. Of course, we know the lungs, it affects the lungs in a real serious way where people are uh, short of breath and they're on oxygen uh, during the acute phase and, uh, and sometimes even on the ventilator in the hospital. And then also um, it can affect the, the, the brain, uh, known patients who have had um, uh, seizures, strokes, um, and we all know, we all have heard about patients that have had a loss of taste or smell. Of course, the, the virus can enter into the brain or the nervous system uh, uh, via the blood or through the nasal pharynx. And uh, when it goes in the nasal pharynx, it does hit the um, olfactory nerve and that nerve is responsible for smell. And so if it, if it goes in that route, and it hits that nerve, then the person is, can potentially lose their uh, sense of smell or taste. And so we have all of these different systems that are affected. Uh, initially, we thought uh, respiratory, and a lot of the focus was on breathing and shortness of breath and, and um, people being ventilated. But this COVID-19 does affect multi-organs, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the brain, and so it leaves people with uh, these long-term effects of, when we talk about the brain, uh, patients can have uh, brain fog and where they're, where they, they're cognitive, uh, cognitively not on target. Mood disorders, depression, anxiety, when we talk about these long-term 
residual effects, we're dealing with all of these different problems. People can only do so much before they become fatigued and they have to sit down. There's a significant amount of people that cannot return to their normal daily activity. Where do we start to approach this problem? Not only do we have the COVID-19 acute uh, problems that we have to deal with, uh, where the people are, all, we're having all these positive cases, people are having these mild, either mild, moderate, or severe symptoms where they have to be in the hospital on the ventilator. But now we have another situation of symptoms that, or a syndrome where patients have these symptoms for three, four, five, six months sometimes. And this uh, research has been done by Dr. Bruce Patterson. This compelling evidence that the cause of these long-term symptoms are from the cytokines. We've talked about the cytokines, how when the virus enters into the lungs, incites inflammation, and, you, and we've talked about the cytokine storm where there's just rampant inflammation in the lung tissue. Well, these cytokines just don't go away that easy. And uh, Dr. Bruce Patterson has actually um, done some, done, has done a lot of research on these cytokines as it relates to these long haulers. And there was, some, there was an experimental study where he looked at patients that had had COVID-19 and continued to have symptoms versus patients that did not have COVID-19 at all. And he found in the patients that had the cytokine levels in their blood were really high. And so now we kind of have a, uh, we have some compelling evidence. So recently, Dr. Bruce Patterson has identified a chemical that will tell, that will tell if you are a long hauler. A lot of patients have gone to their, uh, their doctors and they've done uh, blood work, x-rays, and, and a whole host of tests that have come back normal. And, um, and, and the patients, when they talk to their doctors, the, the doctor either tells them that they, are, they have anxiety or depression or uh, post-traumatic stress disorder from having COVID-19, or they're just hypochondriacs which is not true. We now know that it is a fact that people that have these long-term symptoms, their cytokine levels are very high. And also this chemical that Dr. Bruce Patterson has identified, which has 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity, can identify these patients very quickly and easily. Dr. Bruce Patterson has, uh, since he's identified and done a lot of research on this, he is now accepting uh, blood work from patients that have uh, these long-term symptoms. And uh, they have a way of uh, evaluating the immune system and working with patients that have this uh, these long-term symptoms. They have a, they're taking a holistic approach to uh, treating patients with these symptoms. Uh, they have a psychologist um, uh, that's on board and that can help patients through this. Our future videos will uh, talk about more detail. In fact, I, I am hopeful that by next week, I will be able to give you um, more information, specific information about um, the studies um, and how to get in contact, their website, um, and, and, and all that information that you might need if you're one of those patients out there that are suffering from these long-term effects. Until then, um, please feel free to make comments. Um, if, you, uh, if you like the information that you're getting, uh, push the like button. If you want to become a subscriber and uh, join in the community to help uh, all communities understand a little bit more about uh, the things that are happening 
around this COVID-19. Please subscribe as we move forward and discuss topics related to COVID-19.